The B-11 bomb rack has been used throughout the history of the Air Force as the most reliable method for dropping bombs out of bomber aircraft from World War II to present day. The bomber rack is placed on top of a mechanical controller that quickly moves the arms of the bomb rack inward, activating the mechanism to release the bomb from the shackle. Bombs would be staggered along vertical rails, and this release mechanism would be repeated on a staggered delay from the bottom bomb rack upwards. In between World War II and now, the B-11 bomb rack has been used in nearly every bomber including the B-52, which is still in service today. One of the largest and most notable aircraft in Air Force history, the B-36 Peacemaker, had eight rails for small bombs or munitions. The rails of the B-36 on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force could hold between six to nine bomb racks per rail. This translates to a capacity of between 70 to 90 bombs total capacity with close to double that if the large cradles for the nuclear bombs were swapped out to hold traditional bombs. The B-17 Flying Fortress, particularly the Memphis Bell on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, was understandably much smaller than the B-36 and had only four vertical rails to hold bombs. Each of these vertical rails could hold up to eight bombs. The Memphis Bell gives a good example of how each bomb rack could be latched onto the rail or left blank if a larger bomb like the one in the middle rails was used. That would force the bomb loader to skip a set of hooks to allow for space for that bomb. Moving on to the B-25 Mitchell, the one on display uses the same type of bomb rack as many of the legacy bombers on display at the museum. This plane shows how a bomb would be loaded on into the plane. Bomb loaders would first attach the bomb rack onto the bomb while it was still on the ground and then the bomb would be hoisted up from below. Despite this scene showing cables coming down from inside the plane to load the bomb, traditionally a bomb loader would transport the bombs from a storage bunker using an M5 bomb trailer and then the bombs would be lifted into place using an M1 bomb cart. In the B-29 Liberator fuselage from the plane called Command Decisions, you can see up close and in good lighting how the different sized bomb racks were stacked in the different sections of the plane. The bomb racks in this plane we're not the B-11 model, but it still uses, uses the same A4 release controller. Here is an example of an A4 bomb rack controller and a B-11 bomb rack like you saw in the videos. I'll zoom up close here and show you exactly what they say on their markings. As well as the controller. Now the way that the bomb rack works in conjunction with the controller is the bomb rack would fit in to the controller. The controller would have its arms spread open and I can show you that here. It's kind of a pain to spread them open. This one is the special pain. Just like this the bomb rack would seat inside and then at any angle how big or however big the bomb was it would be actuated the levers would be actuated if you ever wanted to release this controller manually all you had to do is take a screwdriver and trip the controller Now the bomb rack has two levers on it. The first lever on this side would actually actuate the release of the bomb. And you can see here in this little window that there's a pole. And when that pole is removed, it allows the rack to move. I'll show you that again.
Now as this paw moves and the rack moves, watch over here. This nub and this piece inside will slide to the right. They'll slide to the right and they'll slide back. A bomb loader could put a fuse, a lanyard that's connected to the fuse of the bomb here. And that would be held in place by spring tension. Now once the bomb was released, you'll see that that slides out of the way so that the lanyard could fall out. But simultaneously, this other arm comes in and would catch the lanyard. So that's a simple explanation of how this bomb rack works. Now for the bomb rack controller, it's a little bit more complicated. In the front, we have the two levers that we explained earlier move from outward to inward. And then, as well on the back, it's blank, except for this three-pin connector on the bottom left. If we were to remove the plate off the back here, which I'm going to do now, we would find that there's some interesting electronics inside. I'll try and focus the camera in. There we go. And if we take off the back, we see there's a coil here with an electromagnet that runs this mechanism here that would release the bomb shackle. Now on the right side, there are contacts. These contacts can move in and out, and it will give, give feedback across a few of the pins as to what the state of the bomb rack was, or the bomb rack controller. Now this nub is the important mechanism of the whole piece. This nub determines if the bomb is to be released or not, and I'll show you what it looks like caulked here in a second. There's an electric mechanism that turns this cog and as this cog turns this will turn onto there and spring the contacts this will turn to release the pull from this piece here and this will shoot out a rod with an electromagnet then that will keep this piece from over rotating using this pull right here I'll set up a multimeter or power supply and get it all set up here in a second. Alright, here I'm set back up. I have a multimeter with me and I have a power supply as well. I'll zoom out here and my multimeter's right here. I'm going to set my multimeter to continuity mode. And so when it's in the release state, this controller, if you test across these leads here, you'll find that there's continuity and this would give feedback to the operator. If the controller was cocked, between those leads you would find that there shouldn't be any continuity. I'll cock this one first and this one second and we'll talk about how this all works here in a second. goes. Now likewise, there's no continuity. I'm going to release the controller again and we'll talk through about what it looks like when it is cocked. Firstly, I'm going to turn on my power supply to 24 volts. 
Get my multimeter out of the way. And so when this gets cocked, a few things happen. I'll focus in here. This is the easier arm to caulk. This arm will come up and it'll rest here on this paw. And you can see on the right, over here, when that happens, it pushes these contacts together to stop the continuity between these pins. These pins will stay contacted when I do this other lever here. And it's quite hard to do. There it goes. So you'll see that these stay contacted this time. There's a paw that sits up on top of this lever. If this was to turn, these paws would release and the mechanism would release entirely. So starting with this piece right here, let's get you focused in again. If I was to place 24 volts between this pin here and this pin here, you'll see this piece shoot out. This would keep, keep this piece that rotates from over rotating via this paw right here. Now the part you all want to see is if I touch this outside rim the entire bomb rack, excuse me, the entire controller will actuate. Just like that. So that's how this bomb rack controller works. I really hope you appreciate my video. I really hope you subscribe or give me a like. Thank you so much.